Hi friends, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today is the Just Our Imagine playlist. I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes, but if you like a lot of fun and laughter, stay tuned for this playlist because you will enjoy it. But first of all, I just want to say if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my precious Oliver. And if you're returning, you know we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I took this seven inch wood round from Walmart and I'm gonna paint the front of it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. After that, I uh, took some Mod Podge and brushed it all around the front of my wood round and let it dry. And then I am going to keep brushing here because that's what I do. <laughs> and then after that, I took this beautiful napkin. I bought this a year or so ago from uh, decoupagenapkin.com. And I am going to fussy cut all around the image there. And I'm just going to cut very close to the leaves and the flowers, the bird's tail, um, just because I didn't want any of that green napkin. And then after I have that, all cut out. Uh, I, I will stop here in just a moment. Oh my goodness, we're starting off on a bang. Oh my. Anyways, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do that. You could always like do the water method. I just like getting, I wanted to get as close to those uh, flowers and leaves as I could. I removed the two layers that are behind it. This is a three ply napkin. And then after that, I'm gonna lay it down and center it on my wood round. And then I'm going to place some parchment paper over it to protect that napkin. And then I'm gonna use my heat press. I'm gonna go over that napkin. That just reactivates the Mod Podge and causes the napkin to stick. After that, I took my Mod Podge and went over it again to give it that protective layer. And then I set it aside to dry. Once I was done, or <laughs> as it was drying, I took these two little uh, birdhouse pieces from Dollar Tree and painted them with Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. And then once, I, as you notice, I painted the roofs white. And then I'm using my wood glue and hot glue on the back of my wood round and I'm going to glue it to my sign that I got from Dollar Tree here. I'm just gonna glue it right to the top just like it shows and then I'm going to do the exact same thing to these bird houses just using the wood glue in the middle and the hot glue around the edges and again the wood glue is for the permanent hold and the hot glue is for the immediate hold now if you're not filming or you're not in a hurry you could just use the wood glue and just let it sit um, and then it, it will adhere usually 24 hours for it to compute completely cure after that, I took some floral foam and I just used a little bit of hot glue so that I could stick it inside my little birdhouses. And I'm just gonna fill it up with some little roses. These roses come from Hobby Lobby. Um, they, I always get them when they're like 40% off um, or on sale. And I'm just gonna cut a few little pieces off of, of three different colors here. I'm gonna add a few of the leaves and I'm just going to fill up the houses until they uh, make me happy. <laughs> and uh, after that, I, yeah, I used some yellow as well, some pink, purple, and yellow. They kind of went along with um, the colors in that napkin. And then after that, I took some, some jute twine, and I just made a few little small bows, just shoestring bows. I'm going to glue one on each of the houses, in front of the houses, and one on that wood round on the bottom and then uh, that's I think that's all I did on this and it is just super super adorable I love how this turned out and the reveal is coming right up there it is isn't that so cute I love it you have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below Okay, today is the Just Our Imagination Challenge. I host this every month on the second Sunday of every month with my best gal pal, Kathy Joe with Kathy Joe DIY. And this month's 
co-host is Tiffany with Simply Blessed Crafts. Last month, she made these beautiful items with uh, a plunger head and a fence garden fence from Dollar Tree, and we loved it so much, so we invited her to be our guest host. If you don't know who she is, check her channel out. She is very talented. I'll have links to her, Kathy Jo, and the playlist in the description box below. So here's DIY number two. I'm going to take this terracotta pot and this saucer. They're both from Walmart. I'm going to paint them both with my Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. You guys, I don't think Dollar Tree is carrying the ter terracotta pots anymore. I am so bummed. Um, I got this bird at uh, Hobby Lobby. It was 40% off that, $2.99. I'm going to paint that bird with my elephant chalk paint by Waverly. And then after it was all dry, I took a little sponge from Dollar Tree, I cut it down, and I'm dipping it in my ink by Waverly, and I'm just going to go over that uh, gray, that uh, elephant color, and I'm just kind of sponging as much. I kind of, I should have sponged a little bit more of it off of my sponge there because it got really dark, so, but that's okay because I'm still going to go over it again. So as once I had it, sponged as much as I liked. I took some more of the elephant and I sponged over the black. And then um, once I was happy with the results there, I'm going to take uh, Waverly's Silver Lining. I love that color. I don't know why I don't use it very much. Um, and I'm going to go over the uh, elephant and black that I just went over. And you guys, this just makes it look like concrete. And I really, really love how this turns out. After I did the silver lining, I went over again with a little bit more black and a little bit more elephant just to make sure it was all um, as I wanted it. And uh, you just kind of have to look at it and see, you know, does it look like concrete to you? Does it look like something you see outside? And once you see it like that, then you stop. Now, I took some of the elephant and did some distressing. I think I did a little bit too much distressing here. I might go over it a little bit with some more paint, um, but I, I went distressing crazy. You don't have to do that. <laughs> and then I, I got a little bit better on my little saucer here. I just put a little bit here and there and not very much. Um, so the saucer looks much better, but that's okay. After I got done distressing my saucer, I am going to take... Um, Fix all glue, and you can use E6000. Um, you can use any glue that works good for porous items like um, ter like ceramic. Um, and I I put that all around the middle, and then I am going to use my hot glue around the edges for the for the immediate hold. And then I'm just gonna put the bottom side of my pot onto it, and then. I'm going to use just the E6000 on my bird because I knew it was just going to sit there and I wasn't going to be moving it around. And then I took some more of these little roses. I had uh, glued a couple of leaves onto the bottom of my bird bath is what it is. And I'm just going to add a few of these little roses to the bottom. And then I decided to go ahead and add some around the bird as well. And look how cute that is, even with all those little distress marks. <laughs> but I painted in the eyes of that bird with some just some black too. I probably should have put a little white spot. Anyways, I love it. You have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. Hey guys, again, I just want to say thank you. You guys are amazing and I appreciate all my subscribers so very much. I am so close to my 20,000 milestone for subscribers and I would love to reach that before my birthday, which is May 7th. So if you have friends or family members that you think would enjoy today's video, make sure you send them um my video, share it with them, ask them to subscribe, whatever. And if you're watching and you have not subscribed yet and you watch often, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go. I would truly appreciate it. And I would love to reach my goal before my birthday, or at least by my birthday. I will also have a giveaway probably too, uh, when I reach my 20,000. So help a girl out and I'll help you out. So with all that, let's continue with this video. Okay, here's DIY number three. So for this DIY, I'm going to use, for the next two, I'm gonna use our must-use items, which are a funnel, foil, 
and that napkin which I already used. So I'm going to start off with my little wood burning tool here and I'm going to melt off the top part of my um, funnel. If you don't have one of these you could probably use a hot glue gun. You might even be able to use scissors or a knife. You would just have to kind of cut a lot. Um, this made it kind of easy. But then I'm going to cut around the, the rim there. I didn't really want that rim part so I'm just slowly um, going around and melting it and cutting it off. Now it wasn't completely straight but that's okay because it's going to get covered up. You're not going to see it. And then after I have this all melted off, look at that, I just love it, it's like butter. <laughs> I took this uh, non-fat plain Greek yogurt container I had in my stash and I painted it with my elephant chalk paint. And then after it was all dry, I'm going to take the, uh, the funnel there and... Um, I took some of my jumbo craft sticks, the ends of it. Now I had some from the giant size and some from the jumbo size. Um, so I just kind of used because these were scraps that I had in my stash. So I'm just using my fix all glue and hot glue. And I'm just going to go around and hot glue all of those on. And then after I got done with the bottom part, um, I ran out of those. So I just started cutting the edge, the ends off of my jumbo craft sticks that I get from Walmart and I just use those to go around the whole thing and I'm just going to layer it on top of each other so I go all the way around the bottom and then I start um, with a layer above it and then I just work my way up and um, yeah it, <laughs> it's a it's a little funky looking but um, you know it it will do <laughs> because we're using a funnel here so you know it's it's uh you gotta make do with what you have right um once I was done I also took a square piece and just put it over the hole I um took my antique wax and I'm brushing it all over those craft sticks as well as underneath the craft when you saw the wherever you see the bald spots with the the white poking through from the funnel I tried to get in there with my brush to kind of cover it so it wasn't so apparent so um, if you recreate this it might be good to maybe paint it underneath first and then although I, I would I don't know yeah it, it might work that way too <laughs> anyways I brushed off the excess and then just continued until it was all covered once I was done with that I took this little small paintbrush and I'm going to use it to make the circle around my container because we're making a birdhouse so after I had my circle all drawn in with my uh, pin there I'm going to use my really small paintbrush and my Waverly chalk paint and the color ink and I'm just going to paint all around the circle I'm going to paint it in and I am just going to slowly paint it in and I'm going to make you watch all of this oh my goodness look what I did I was so glad that it did not fall on my uh container there <laughs> I have been so clumsy lately I don't know what's what's going on anyways um I can't believe I'm showing you all this I am so sorry uh I was exhausted last night when I was editing and I guess I was just not completely focused so I think I get a little faster here painting in the middle <laughs> okay and then I will let it dry and what do I do next? Oh, I took a little dowel and I, well, I took a dowel that was in my stash and I cut it down and I'm just going over it with some antique wax. I'm going to brush it on and I'm going to wipe it off. And then um, after that, I also took this bird and, but I'm not going to use it because it was too big. I painted that, but I'm going to use some hot glue and I'm just going to hold that in place for a little bit while that hot glue sets. And then I'm going to uh, take my fix all glue and hot glue and I'm going to go around the rim of this yogurt container and then I'm going to glue my funnel right on top of it. Now that bird, I was planning on putting that bird on the top of my birdhouse, but it, it just looked, it was too big and I didn't have one. I had one that was too big and one that was too small. I didn't have one that was just right. So I decided not to put anything on the top. But I took these little wood pieces that I got. I, I think these came from Dollar Tree. And I painted them 
with some different acrylic colors and then I'm just going to glue them on the front. I put my bird right there on the perch. Isn't it cute? And then I'm just going to hot glue the flowers all around my container just like you see me doing right there. Oh my goodness, I'm going to show you every single step. <laughs> Don't edit when you're tired. This is what happens. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then one more, one more flower. And then I think we're done. I tried to think of something to put on top of my birdhouse, but I just couldn't think of anything. But anyways, I thought about maybe putting a little moss with a flower, but I thought that might look kind of funny, but I don't know. It's kind of cute. You have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. Okay. It is a time for a celebration of your recreation. And Michelle, these are so pretty. She made that cute little snowman fa uh, family for her daughter. I just love them. Thank you so much, Michelle. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Okay, DIY number four. Okay, so we had um, to use tinfoil. So I want thought about using it to try to make flowers, but I really wanted to try and use it as a background. And um, so I thought about like crinkling it up and painting over it, but that just didn't seem like anything good enough. So I went online and I looked to see if there was anything you could do with tin foil. And I saw this method and I thought it was amazing. So I took that wood flower from Dollar Tree and I'm taking this stencil that I got from Amazon. I'll have them in my Amazon store. And I'm just taking a pencil and I'm tracing out the whole stencil onto that flower. Then I took this little mini uh, hot glue gun that Kathy Jo gave me. And I am going around all of my design there. Just going all around it. And it did take a while. It wasn't hard. Um, but it was kind of fun. And then I took my glue stick here, which is the Elmer's School glue. And I'm going over all all of the raised areas and then I thought no I want to go over the whole area so I went over the areas that did not have the hot glue as well because you want the uh, tin foil to stick to your whatever you're putting it on so I start putting it all around the bottom there I was getting it all over my place I was getting low on my glue stick I had to get another one out but um, I'm just gonna go over everything and then after that was, after it was completely covered, I took my tin foil and I'm just going to lay it on top and then I'm just going to push it down onto all the glued areas. And then I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm just going to start rubbing around all the raised image that I did with my, um, uh, with the glue hot glue. And I wasn't quite sure you guys, I was still, even though I saw this, you could do this. I was still like, is this really going to work now? It might work better with something that's not as detailed, um, or bigger image because I find it kind of hard to see what exactly it is, but you can see it and you can, it, it, it does look really cool. Um, so I just went ahead and went around everything and you want to be careful that you don't push too hard because you don't want to rip your, foil, although I did rip it a little bit on the ampersand, but that's okay because you can't really tell because I paint over it. So after it was done, now on the tutorial I watched, they used um, uh, shoe polish, but I didn't have shoe polish. Shoe polish. Oh my goodness. Um, so I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I took a sponge brush and I'm dabbing up and down and I'm like, this just isn't looking right. It's like it's too much black. So I thought, well, maybe if I, instead of dabbing up and down, if I just kind of like brush with my sponge and I would suggest using some kind of a sponge, I'm um, not a brush. So, um, then when I started doing this, I'm like, yes, this is what it was supposed to look like. It's, it, it comes out looking so cool. It looks like, you know, like a stone you would have outside. Um, I don't even know what they call those, but anyways, like the stepping stone kind of things, but I love how this turns out. It's just, it is so cool. It is kind of hard to read the flower part. Garden turned out really good. Um, could have been because of the way the 
hot glue was. I don't know. But anyways, I love how this comes out. And so I was like, okay, now what do I want to do with it? I don't want to just have this as a, a sign to hang up on. So I took this Easter sign that I had in my stash that looks like a fence. And I'm just going to rip off all of the paper that's on it here. And once I had the top layer off, I spritz it all down with water and let it sit for about five minutes. And then after that I take my um, paint scraper and I just scrape off all that extra uh, paper and glue and then once it was done I just sprayed some um, goo gone into a napkin and just kind of wiped off any excess residue. Then I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I did both sides front and back and then I took this square ruler here and I am going to uh, draw lines right where the fence lines would be. And then uh, I had to, it didn't go all the way down, <clears throat> excuse me, so I had to turn it upside down to make the bottom lines. Then I smudged the lines with my fingers. Now, this really wasn't necessary because of what I do here. <laughs> I went ahead with my elephant color and I'm just going to distress all the way around my fence, um, all around the edges. And I did a little bit in the middle and then I took a small paintbrush and I just outlined those lines that I made. And then... Um, I am going to use my little chip brush and just kind of distress it so it's not so smooth looking. And then after that, I took my little flower here. I'm using my wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue it onto the front of my fence. And then I also painted a couple of wood butterflies that I had in my stash. I think the wood butterflies came from Hobby Lobby maybe, but you could use any. And I'm going to glue one on the top of of the fences. Now I feel like there's something else that needed. I added a hanger, but I just couldn't think of what. I feel like there needed to be some grass or something on the bottom. I, maybe I should have put some moss. I don't know, but there it is. It is so cool. It's, I tried to get close so you could kind of see it. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, yeah, what a cool technique, huh? You have to give it a try. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so the final reveal is coming right up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you uh, stay tuned and check out the playlist. I'm sure you will um, have a lot of fun seeing what people create with their funnel and their tinfoil and their napkins. And then again, make sure you check out Tiffany's channel and of course the Miss Kathy Jo who is wonderful. Uh, and I will be back again on Thursday with another video. So until then, I hope you guys have an blessed week and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.